Welcome to our service today. The folk from Scalway Methodist Church are delighted to be able to share this all-age Advent service with you. Let us begin with our call to worship and the words from John 1, 6-8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe he himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Come, continue on the journey. It's not far now. But where are we going? God is welcoming us to God's kingdom. Can we see it from here? We see it in the faces of those who know of God's love. Will that same love be given to us? It's already been given. And his name is Jesus. He is God's beloved Son, our light and hope. Quickly, let us journey towards his light. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, all oh, ye faithful, joyful and child. Come ye to Bethlehem, 
Let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. For he is Christ our Lord. We offer you our praise and adoration today. For you are worthy of all the praise that we can give you and more. As we come to you today to hear the familiar story of your coming to earth, as a baby. Help us to see past the shiny nativity scenes, the Christmas decorations and the stresses and strains of the Christmas preparations. Help us to see the reason for the season. We're sorry for when we get too wrapped up in preparing for celebrating Christmas and have forgotten that it's you who we are celebrating and forgotten that it's our hearts that you want to prepare in order to receive you and everything that you have prepared for us. We're sorry for when we've not recognised who you are, what you've done for us through the sending of your son to earth as a baby, in order for him to pay the price for our sins so that we can be reconciled to you. We thank you, Lord God, even though so much around us has been cancelled this year, that Christmas will never be cancelled, that the good news of that first Christmas remains the same, and nothing and no one can take that away. And as so much has been stripped away and simplified, this year may you reveal yourself to us again, and may we take the opportunity to quiet in our hearts and focus on you this Christmas time. So, still us today, whether we're meeting together in church or in our homes, we know that you are with us. So still our busy minds and help us to focus on you and to receive the best gift ever, the gift of your unfailing love and salvation in a deeper way. May you help us to remain focused on your, you throughout this Advent. And when the decorations come down, help us not to put you away with the tinsel too, but to carry the truth and the joy of Christmas with us throughout the year. And this we pray, in your loving name. Amen. And now Yvonne is going to light our Advent uh, candle on this, the third Sunday in Advent. As we light this third Advent candle, may its flame be a symbol of joy. Let its warmth be a symbol of God's love for each one of us. And may it inspire us to live simply and generously after the example of John the Baptist and our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. Amen. What? Oh, family. Spirit. Jesus. Snow. Family. Mary. Jesus. Family. Love. Joy. Christmas tree. Brussels sprouts. Santa Claus. Emmanuel. Giving. Fun. Birthday. <laughs> Birthday. <laughs> Birthday. Family. Presents. Love. Family. Hi, everybody. To me, Christmas means love. For me, Christmas is all about family. And for me, it means happiness. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody! everybody. presence 
that's divine There's a child to change the future Turning water into wine Look inside, look above Look beyond and see the love Look inside and you will see Look inside, look below Look beyond and you will know The one who came to give his life for you and me The miracle of childbirth now reveals God's only Son A miracle beginning That continues on and on The stable holds the echo Of the tomb that's yet to be On the manger lies the shadow Of the cross he's yet to see Look inside, look above Look beyond and see the love Look inside and you will see Look inside, look below Look beyond and you will know The one who came to give his life for you and me He came to give his life A few moments ago, people told us in one word what Christmas means to them, and we had some brilliant answers. And now we're going to welcome back our good friends, Ruthie and Ringo, who were the stars of the show at the Scalloway Messy Church 10th birthday celebration. And they're having a chat today about what Christmas means to them. And after that, we'll have our Bible readings, which today are read by Heather and Justice from the Scalloway Youth Group. Like how I was a baby? Uh, like how I'm 
still a baby. Yes, an angel told Mary and Joseph they would have a baby and they should call him Jesus. So then Jesus was born. Well, well not just yet. Uh, there, there's a bit more to the story that we can't leave out. Oh! Yeah, you see, well, there were these Romans. Do you remember them, Romans? Oh, 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 yes, we learned about them in school. They went marching everywhere and conquered everything and like, da 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 kaboom! Well, well, these Romans, they were ruling over the land where Mary and Joseph lived. And the ruler, he decided to count everyone. Uh, what does that have to do with Jesus being born? Well, remember I said God had a plan? Well, God had told the people many, many years before that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. But, well, Mary and Joseph, they were in Nazareth. Hmm, this looks like a problem. Not for God. He had the Roman ruler decide to count everyone in their hometown. <laughs> And guess where Joseph was from? Oh, 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 let me guess, let me guess. Um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 Scalloway. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, um, uh, uh, oh, oh, what's the name? Uh, l l uh, uh, Larry. Oh. No, silly, Bethlehem. Oh. It was a long, long trip, and they had to walk or ride a donkey. Well, they should have picked a different travel agency. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Well, guess what else? When they got to Bethlehem, there was no rooms at any inn. They were all full. Man, who was their travel agent? God. Did God make their travel plans? He sure did. And you know what? What? He knew exactly what he was doing and exactly what was happening. So what did they do? They found a place in a stable to stay. Where the animals sleep? Mm, sounds cool. Are you sure God planned this? Yep, I sure am. Well, it doesn't sound like the place I would pick for God's son to be born. I mean, where are the hordes of people, the parade, the big bands, and the news broadcasting people? You know, like, dee -dee 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 shepherds. Just shepherds? Yes. God wanted all people to know about his son, not just people we think are important. See, all people are important to God, rich or poor, young or old, weak or strong. And uh, even people like Donald Trump? Ah, mm -hmm. uh, well, I suppose even Donald Trump is important to God, yes. Huh. Weird. So, uh, so uh, after they saw Jesus, didn't they go tell everyone about him? That's right. And as for the broadcasting people, God used an angel to oh. announce Jesus' birth to the shepherds. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Oh. Wow, I bet that was awesome. Well, the shepherds, they were terrified. Then a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel. That's much, much better than a band and parade. Yes, and they were praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men on whom his favor rests. I guess God really did plan all that. Yep. From the beginning to the end, God's plan was to bring salvation to all mankind. Didn't you just tell me the beginning of the story? Yep. See, the middle of the story 
chapter 2 verses 2 to 20. Everyone have had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. An event for everyone. There were sheep herders camping in the neighbourhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly God's angel stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I am here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody. Worldwide. A saviour has just been born in David's town. A saviour who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're going to look for. A baby wrapped in a blanket and laying in a manger. At once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Mary kept all things to herself, holding them dear, deep within herself. The sheep herders returned and let loose, glorifying and praising God for everything they had heard and seen. It turned out exactly the way they had been told. Hello. Today I'll be reading Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 15. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship. A band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around, where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews. We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified, and not Herod alone but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars in the city together and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, Bethlehem, Judah territory. The prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly where the birth announcement star appeared. Then he told them the prophecy about Bethlehem and said, Go find this child. Leave no stone unturned. As soon as you find him, send word, and I'll join you at once in your worship. Instructed by the king, they set off. Then the star appeared again, the same star they had seen in the eastern skies. It led them on until it hovered over the place of the child. They could hardly contain themselves. They were in the right place. They had arrived at the right time. They entered the house and saw the child in the arms of Mary, his mother. 
overcome, they kneeled and worshipped him. Then they opened their luggage and presented gifts. Gold, frankincense, myrrh. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod, so they worked out another route, left the territory without being seen, and returned to their own country. After the scholars were gone, God's angel showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child and wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under cover of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. They lived in Egypt until Herod's death. This Egyptian exile fulfilled what Hosea had preached. I called my son out of Egypt. Have a good day. God bless you all. We all enjoy all the different kinds of food that we get at Christmas time, and especially chocolate. I wonder what kind of chocolate you're looking forward to seeing under your Christmas tree this year. One of my favourites is a Snickers bar. And I remember a couple of years ago, I thought that Christmas had come early uh, for me because we went carol singing in Lerwick and Susie had taken lots of tubs of chocolate uh, we had to hand it to the folk that were listening to us singing. And she mentioned that uh, she'd taken out all the Snickers bars just in case anybody had a nut allergy. And I mentioned that the uh, Snickers were my favourite. And then the next Sunday when I arrived at uh, church to play for the carol service, on top of my keyboard was a bag full of Snickers that Susie had left for me. And I was just so uh, delighted. Another uh, chocolate that's favourite at this time of year is the chocolate orange. 
I remember somebody once trying to tell me that a chocolate orange must be healthy because it's called an orange, but I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, but I quite like a chocolate orange for another reason, because it helps to tell the real meaning of Christmas. Uh, the story that Ruthie was telling to Ringo. Well, firstly, at Christmas time, we remember that Jesus came into the world uh, to be a king for everybody. Look how lovely and shiny and sparkly uh, the wrapper is on a chocolate orange. Um, it looks a bit like a jewel, doesn't it? Um, I love to um, see the Queen's tiaras and see all the sparkly uh, jewellery that Kate has and things like that. This, so this uh, wrapper reminds us about that jewels and things like that and reminds us that Jesus came to be our king. Now look at the shape of the chocolate orange. It looks a bit like a globe, a bit like the shape of the world. Can you remember what uh, the angels said in our reading? They said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that's meant for everybody worldwide. A saviour has just been born in David's town. A saviour who is Messiah and Master. They said that something amazing had happened, not just for some people, for a few people, but for the whole world and everybody in the world. The chocolate orange helps us to remember that Jesus came to earth for everybody, not just for a few special people, but he came for me and he came for you. But I'm sure you would all agree that the most important thing about a chocolate orange is the bit that's inside. And you know what you have to do to get all the chocolate se segments separated? Well, I've watched some YouTube uh, videos on how to do this properly. And what you're supposed to do is that you need to break it like that and still have the cover on while you're doing that to get all the segments apart and this reminds me that just like what the puppets were telling us uh, that Jesus uh, came to earth uh, to save us and in order to fulfill his purposes Jesus body was broken for us in order for us to be forgiven uh, for our order for us to have a relationship with Jesus himself and that's the most amazing bit about the Christmas story, is that Jesus made himself into a tiny baby and came to earth so that we can have a relationship with him and can have him as a constant friend in our lives every day. Now, let's open up with chocolate on and see if my technique has worked. Let's see if those, oh, look at that, those segments are all separate I did it. Yay! <laughs> Um, it's all in lots of different bits um, but this also helps us to remember what the angels said as well when the shepherds heard the news they went straight to the stable where the baby Jesus had been born and we are told in the Bible that after they'd seen the baby Jesus they went and told everybody that they met about him and shared the good news with all the people they met you know, when we hear good news, it's really difficult to keep it to ourselves, isn't it? Um, I can always tell if my parents have got some exciting news because they come bumbling in the door, rushing in the door, uh, all shouting over each other and shouting out their exciting news. And as Ruth said, that's what we should be doing. We should be telling others about Jesus and about who he is and what he's done for us in our lives. At Christmas time and all year round, in fact, we need to remember to share the good news of the King who was born for everybody in the whole world. We need to tell everybody how special Jesus is and about why Jesus came as a baby and what he did for you and what he did for me. And just, so it'll be a bit greedy for me to keep this chocolate orange all to myself and not share it with my family. We need to be sharing with other people. We need to not be greedy and, and keep it a secret. Uh, we need to share the story of our King, the baby Jesus, and be willing to share also about what Jesus has done in our lives. Because Jesus isn't some distant person in history. Jesus is here for us each and every day, and he can help with so much in our lives if we'll only uh, just turn to him. At this time of year, 
I don't know if you're like me, but I'm frantically kind of trying to think about what's the perfect present to give to my friends and my family that I love. But do you know something? The best present that we can give to our friends and our family at this time of year is to share our friend Jesus with them. Now I'm going to tuck into this chocolate. And I think Yvonne's got something to show you as well. Hello. After listening to Shirley's story, where she used a chocolate orange, I was reminded of an experiment I'd been reading about recently called Bobbing Oranges. And I've got two clementines here this morning, so I'm going to try it with you. Now, we need a bowl of water, and I'm going to put the clementine in the water. Now, do you think it will float or sink? Well, we see. Here it goes. Oh, it's come to the surface. It's floating. Will we try another one? Yes, they're both floating. Now, I wonder if I take one out, and I'm going to peel it now. So, um, if you can bear with me, I'll be as quickly, do this as quickly as I can. Let's see. Now, get the peel off it. Smells delicious, by the way. Now, I'm going to put it into the bowl of water again. What do you think will happen? Well, we see. Oh, it's sunk right to the bottom. Can you see that? Now, I wonder why that happened. Hmm. Actually, I can tell you. It's because inside the peel, there are tiny, tiny little air pockets. And that causes the orange or the clementine to float on the surface. Isn't that great? At Christmas time, most of us are very fortunate to receive lots of lovely gifts. But the most important and most precious gift that we could ever receive is one that God sent, and that's Jesus. As a gift to the world and as a gift for you and me. If you think about it, the orange peel protects the, the fruit of the orange and enables it to float. In a similar way, Jesus is like an orange peel in that he, with the tiny ear pockets, in that he wraps his wonderful love around us. And with him, all things are possible. Isn't that fantastic? I'm now going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. On this third Sunday of Advent, we give thanks for the messenger of Jordan, proclaiming the advent of someone greater than he, urging all people to prepare their hearts. We rejoice that through the ages, the message has brought hope and joy. We give thanks for the messengers of today, our message like a lamp shining in a dark place, calling us to watch and pray. We rejoice that God is always faithful and keeps calling us. We pray for all Christian people that they may hold their faith dear. We pray for people everywhere that they may open their hearts and minds to the good news of the gospel. We pray for the leaders of the nations as they work for progress and peace. We pray that leaders will act wisely as they lead us through the COVID pandemic and that they may not lose sight of those struggling with unemployment and those in need. We thank God for the relationships in which he has placed us. We remember by name family, friends and neighbours. Thank you for the people we love and the people who love us. Thank you, loving God, for making us as we are. We pray for people in special need those who are lonely or have given up hoping. We pray for people facing danger or difficulty, people struggling with life, people who grieve. We pray for people who are frail and vulnerable, those who are sick at home, in hospital or nursing home. May they find light in times of darkness and peace in times of struggle and experience your love surrounding them. Merciful Father, 
Accept his prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we now say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Squander of a borrowed stable by the Spirit and the Virgin's faith to the anguish and the shame of scandal came the Savior of a human race. But the skies were in with the praise of heaven.
Thank you for joining us in worship today. A particular thanks goes to Ruthie and Ringo, also known as Jenny and Sheila, to Rachel and to our Bible readers, Justice and Heather. Let us pray. God sends us out in the light of Christ to bring light into our world of darkness. May the light of Christ so shine in our hearts that we might bring his light to others. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.